What sorcery is this? Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. And it's always an exciting day when you're chatting with Brian Winters and he says, I have an absolutely brand new concept coming out. And you can feel the excitement coming from him. And myself being an enormous fan of the work that he has done prior, I always know but it's going to be something radical and different and completely outside of the box. Well, he has done it again. What we're looking at here is not a knife full of magnets, although there is one magnet, and it's only there for convenience. It's not there for function or to operate the knife or to lock the knife or anything like that. And there's a spring inside. But again, it's not there to open the knife or do what you think it's going to do. The spring is actually built into this little tab right here. Well, not so much the tab, it's actually built into the lock, which helps to hide the tab. One of my favorite features of this new knife is the size. Because if you go back and watch any of my older factor videos on B1, B2, or B3, this is B3, I've always said I wish the factor was just a little bit bigger. And that is sure to come probably in the next year or so. But what you've got here is the same form factor as the factor. And I realize how silly that sounds together. So you have a handle that's roughly the same shape, uh, about the same height, almost the same ergonomics. But the whole knife is much larger. And that is exactly what we needed. Now, what makes this knife so unique? So you're looking at it going, okay, so it's got, a, uh, it's got an axis lock or a crossbar lock, whatever you want to call it, and it does. However, you have multiple ways of accessing this lock. You can do it from the back. You can do it from the front. You can do it by pinching it. Or you can access this little tab that's right down here and that will drop the lock. I'm sorry, that will drop the blade. It will release the lock and drop the blade. Now, one of the other things that you might find interesting about this is the blade itself as well as the pocket clip. And you're looking at it going, that looks a lot like bacon or galactic bacon Damascus. And it does. It looks a lot like it. However, it is not Damascus. This is actually just good old M390. What they've done is they've done a black PVD on the M390 and then a laser pattern through it to give it this unique look. So you're getting the look of a very expensive Damascus without having to pay that very expensive price. So let's go through the knife. As always, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow my format of the TLDW, Too Long Didn't Watch. If you don't have a lot of time to dedicate to knife reviews, well, I don't know why you're clicking on a knife review on YouTube then. But if you don't, uh, I'm going to make that as quick and concise as possible with the pros and the cons of this particular knife. Then we'll get into the specs. And then after that, getting into the actual review portion of the video. 
So without any further ado, TLDW, what do I love and what do I not so love about this knife? Uh, pros. The biggest pro for me is the fact that it has the look and the familiar feel of the Winter Blade Factor, which is still one of my absolute favorite knives that I've ever owned. They're unique, they're cool, they're fidget friendly, they're, they, they occupy your hand and your nervousness very, very well. Excellent cutters, great form factor. Uh, when you first get one, it is one of the oddest things that you'll hold in your hand and you'll wonder if you really do like it or not. But most people, myself included, found that it grew on them very, very quickly. Now, I do prefer the B3 with the titanium on both sides. The B1s and B2s had carbon fiber for the backside. And while there was absolutely nothing wrong with that, it was something that I think was upgraded greatly by going into full titanium. Now, you're going to be getting into full titanium here as well with options in aluminum as well as G10. So you're going to have a lot of different flavors to choose from. And that, I think, is going to be my second pro. This knife comes in a lot of variations this time around. And each variation, I think, is going to speak to entirely different people. Uh, when I saw the G10, I thought that was very, very cool. I was like, oh, man, that G10. But this unique teal color in the uh, titanium version really, really sung to me. Next pro is going to be the Stealth Lock. Now, the Stealth Lock is Brian's name for his internal crossbar lock that is stealthily hiding away a little switch. So you've got all the benefits that you would have from that type of lock. It's very, very secure, locking up against the, uh, the tang of the blade there in both the open and closed positions. So what you're getting here instead of a detent or his magnets that you would see in the factor that give you a detent feel is you are getting the tension of the compression spring that's inside of this lock. Now, a lot of people are going to assume that this knife, as with all other preceding designs, is using some sort of magnet technology and it's not. As a matter of fact, the only magnet that's inside of that, actually it's not even inside, the only magnet on this knife is this thumb stud. That collar right there is a super ridiculously strong magnet that you can use to make that reversible. And no, it cannot slide off or fly out or anything else. Push it with a ballpoint pen or anything small that will fit in that hole. You push the thumb stud out with the magnetic collar, and then you can flip it around and just slide it back into the other side. Now, when you do that, it's as secure as it was when it arrived to you. It's as secure as any screwed in or uh, pressure fit thumb stud system that you've come across. So there's no downside to it. It's just a really cool little addition. Now, Another pro is going to be the fact that you have multiple methods of opening. You've got the, uh, the blade window that you can reverse flick. You've got the thumb stud. You can release the lock. And you have multiple methods of closing. So if I wanted to close it very simply like that, or I can choose to use the tab or not, it's up to me. And let's see, what other pros are there? The way that he has designed this area here to allow your finger to drop very easily over into the thumb stud or into the blade window. Brilliantly done, as always. Man, that thing is super cool. Now let's get into the cons. Are there any cons? Well, the only con I can really come up with right now, I've only had this in my possession for about a day uh, or two days now, maybe two days, is just like every other 
crossbar lock, you're going to have to get the timing just right where you're releasing the lock and that blade is swinging back and you want to let go before it closes. Because if you're still holding it, there's nothing pushing against the tang of the blade and it can bounce. Now, he has developed a way in here because the tension is so strong on this spring that you don't have to have perfect timing. You can let off a little bit early and it's not going to bounce. So you've got just enough strength on that lock up against the blade that it reduces the amount of times it's going to bounce. If you'll remember when I had reviewed the Brown Knives FSD, as overwhelmingly positive as that review was, one of my complaints was it took a long time to master the timing so you weren't constantly bouncing the blade. Because if you bounce the blade, it ends up open like this, and you don't realize it, and you go to move or do something, you could cut into yourself, slice yourself open, and cause issues for yourself that a normal standard, let's say, frame lock or liner lock wouldn't have done to you. And the other con for me is I was one of those people on the original factor, the factor B1, that said, boy, I kind of wish that detent feel, because again, they weren't, it wasn't actually a detent, it was magnets, it, it, they worked as the detent. I wish that was just a little bit stronger. And then that was approved, improved upon on the B2s. With the B2s, you had different magnets that were shipped with the knife, so you could adjust how it felt yourself. If you wanted it stronger, if you wanted it medium, if you wanted it weaker, then you had that, ch that choice. On the B3s, this one right here, you're getting that stronger detent feel. And I really, really like that. So if I were to change one thing about this knife, it would be I wish there was a bit stronger of a detent feel. Oh, I didn't realize I could do that. All right, so it will snap out under its own weight without doing anything to it. So, yeah, if, if, again, if there was one major thing I would change, it would just be that. Now, it's not a deal breaker in any way. Uh, it still feels really good. The action is really nice. But I do wish I could just kind of preload a little bit on that and let it fire out. Okay, that's the pros and the cons out of the way. Now let's get into the specs and talk about how different this knife is from his previous models. Oh, and I do still love the, uh, the Mirage. This was his magnetic powered assisted opener instead of using springs. So what's the deal here on the specs? Overall length of seven and three quarter inches. That's a good size, man. It's a good size for this style of knife. Blade length of three and a quarter inches. That is M390. That is DLC or PVD coated and then laser etched to look like Damascus. Your edge length is two and three quarter inches. You have options in titanium, in aluminum, and in G10. So you've got a whole new size here that we're looking at, but a familiar feel. Oh, and another thing I really should have put into the pros that I really like is I like this huge forward finger choil that we have not had before in his designs. One of the changes Brian told me that he's going to be making between this prototype and his full production is they're going to be rounding it off here in the frame just a little bit so that you've got easier access into that little finger choil there. There's a nice close-up look. Now, what I wanted to do that I typically don't do in my videos was take the knife apart because I know that there are going to be tons of questions about the lock 
how it works, how only one spring works for the lock and works to hold that pivoting tab. Because if you go to something like, say, GTC and their SLT, their, their spring-loaded tab, that's a flipper tab, and that does have a spring in the actual tab itself so that it pivots and then it conceals itself back down into the frame. So really, this, this system here, which, by the way, is the first thing that Brian has chosen to patent. He's got a patent pending on this stealth lock. What he's chosen to do here is put an access to the lock on a tab instead of having a flipper on the tab. Very, very cool. So what you basically got here is a kind of a hybrid between a, a GTC SLT and a Demco Knives Shark Lock because it really operates very similar to a Shark Lock. If there was always a ramp sitting up here exposed from the frame, you would pull straight back on it and it would disengage that lock. I do like that it's hidden away and the knife looks a lot sleeker without having a big shark fin sticking out of it. And you'll see that it's actually quite easy to get in there and activate it. All you're going to do is you're going to drop your finger right here at the stop pin and you're going to push in and back. And when you're pushing in, that's allowing your finger, the meat of your finger, to get underneath that tab and pull it upwards while you're pulling it back. And you can see the lock engaging and disengaging right here. So that would be locking it in the open position. That bar drops in place and prevents the knife from possibly ever closing. Here it's adding tension. And there it's dropping into the tang once again but it's only there to give it sort of a detent, hold it in. Uh, it's not locking it in place, so you don't obviously have to disengage this to open it. All right, so as we look at the mechanism inside, how it operates, the location of that single screw, you see, number one, how simple the actual mechanism is, even though it looks like it's gonna be very, very complex. But then it also gives you an appreciation for how Brian's mind works, how complex it was to design all of these individual components, have them fit together, have these plates work together. You know, the order in which the screws are going in and then the, the frame of the, the body of the, the, the knife goes together, how everything's sandwiched together. It's really done brilliantly. And I think that... He's come up with something unique and cool. Again, it is a lot like a shark lock. I, I had somebody comment on the short that I put up the other day. They're like, oh, so basically it's a shark lock. No, it's not. It is similar. It has the similar operation. But then again, the shark lock really was innovating on the crossbar lock system by giving you Basically, I guess we could call it spinal access. So you have a spine lock that works on the crossbar lock. And now Brian has taken it to another evolution, which I think is super cool. And it works really, really well. Now, I'm the kind of person, I don't like access locks. I don't like crossbar locks. I don't own a single knife with those because I don't like them. And one of the reasons I don't is they tend to be placed in a way that it's hitting my index finger if I want to flick the, the blade open. And a lot of times it won't let the blade flip out or flick out the way that I want it to. I like the fact that they're very, very solid locks and I like the fact that they're easy to disengage. But this one is easier because I can just reach right up here and just drop the blade right on down. See, if you just kind of do it nice and slow and easy, I mean, it just drops in place with little to no blade bounce whatsoever. 
It's just when I'm sitting out here and getting in a hurry and I want to go, yeah, I'm going to end up doing it. So that's, oh, man, I can't get over this thing. Um, that's the uh, seven in a nutshell. I think overall the whole knife is beautifully designed. It follows the design DNA that, that Brian has set up for himself. And it's still something high tech without necessarily having to use his trademark magnets. 100% ambidextrous. So you have a lock that you can access from both sides as well as from the top. You have a reversible pocket clip. For those that don't know, the Factor had a reversible pocket clip. And the 7 does as well. All you're going to do is you're going to remove this screw here. You're going to remove these screws. You're going to flip it over and then reattach it. Simple as that. So now, those of you that are lefties can finally quit complaining. Oh my God. I love the knife, but I wish I could carry it. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm kidding. Now, lefties have something to be happy about, to get excited about. Not often we get a chance to come out here and say, this is a completely ambidextrous knife and it doesn't look like garbage with a bunch of extra pockets and a whole bunch of holes and other goofy things on there that take away from the design of the knife. Here you've got something in one piece that takes mere seconds to switch over. I like that idea. Now, I don't know what the price is just yet, but I do know that the pre-order for these is going to be opening up very, very soon. As a matter of fact, it's going to be November 22nd at 8 p.m. Eastern over at Winterblade's website, which is right here on your screen. That's winterbladeco.com. Now remember, the brand is not called Winter Blade Co. Uh, or Winter Blades. It's Winter Blade, and their website is winterbladeco.com, and their Instagram is at winterbladeco. And by the way, for those that are wondering how easy is this to take apart and put back together, well, everything on this knife is T8, so you don't have to be in the middle of holding all these components together and then you're having to switch from a T8 to T6s or anything else. Everything is T8. That helps a lot. Um, yeah, you'll notice that I sped up the disassembly on this because this took a little bit of time to actually do. Disassembly is super easy. Everybody could take, you know, pretty much anything apart. Getting it back together did take a couple of minutes. I decided to do that off camera just because... I was pretty sure I was going to be cursing and throwing things. It didn't get to that point. It wasn't that difficult. It's not like trying to take a factor apart and dealing with the magnets that are inside of it, grabbing the hardware and, and moving things out of place when you're trying to put the blade back in place and all that. But because the, the pivot is dropped in from the front side, not the back side, you have to have something holding aligning, I should say, aligning everything through the pivot hole to make your life a little bit easier. So get yourself a, a little dowel. It's probably, I'm not even going to guess. I don't know what the pivot hole opening is, but get yourself a little dowel that will fit in there and hold the blade in place because when you're putting it back together, the lock wants to push the blade out of the way and stuff like that. But it really isn't too terribly difficult. Um, you don't have to have any, you know, degree of proficiency to get this apart or back together. Oh, I got a little bit of blade bounce there. There we go. You just got to nail the timing or just be gentle with it and let the lock suck the blade in for you. So once you get past right about here, get yeah, right about there the lock is actually going to push the blade down for you like a detent would. And I don't know that I go for the spine release as often as I go for the side button, just because I'm so used to the factors. The only way to close the factor is this one switch on the presentation side. 
So I'm so used to doing that, that I'm probably going to end up doing that most of the time with this one anyway. But I do like having that option. For those of you that watched the uh, Demco video that I did last year, you know that I really did enjoy the, the actuation of that lock. But I like this one a little bit more because I've got the option. I can grab it however I want to grab it and release it. So anyway, there's my thoughts on the new Severn. Again, this is the prototype. <clears throat> there may be a couple of little teeny tiny changes between this and production. And I don't really know that for certain, but I don't think that there's anything major that's going to change. So keep that in mind. When the pre-order date uh, hits on November 22nd, get in line, be ready. Make sure you grab one for yourself and do not miss out because literally everything that Brian touches is gold. His design work is amazing. His understanding of the mechanics of, of what you can do with knives and make them operate differently without them being ridiculous and just cumbersome to be, just to be cool and different. He's a genius and he just keeps firing off with all these winners. And I've yet to see a design of his that wasn't jaw dropping. And this is just another fine example. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now, and I'll see you on the next video.